Hey everyone, I'm CJ, and obviously we're going to be talking about some unprofessional professionals today. But before we get into that, um, you know, I don't exactly have this super deep and extensive history with, with Greg Capullo uh, from the standpoint of being a fan. Basically, my first real exposure to Greg Capullo's work, that at least I can remember, was it, it uh, happened um, probably a lot, uh, probably very similar to a lot of the rest of you. He took over the the art for Spawn. I don't know. That, I think that was like 1994, 95, something like that. <clears throat> but that... He, I want to say it's probably around uh, spawn number 24 or 25. It's around there. And the reason he took over the art was basically because Todd McFarlane, the penciler, didn't have very much time to draw the book. Because Todd McFarlane, the writer, had to write the book. Todd McFarlane, the business owner, had to manage his business. Todd McFarlane, the budding toy mogul, had to build up a, a, a new business. On and on and on. And so, basically taking the art off of the... Basically taking art out of the equation would better allow Todd McFarlane to do everything else he needs to do while somebody else can handle the art. And to be fair to all parties involved, when Greg Capullo took over the work, for Spawn, he started drawing it on a regular basis. McFarlane, as far as I know, was still inking the book, and so the end result was the book was... it was kind of hard to figure out where Greg Capullo's work ended and where Todd McFarlane's work began. The art was a pretty successful amalgamation of their respective styles. And mostly that arrangement seemed to be working. And so that was really my introduction to Greg Capullo. I've always enjoyed his work. And one of the things that I think anybody back in the 90s who was collecting comics, the minute you see Greg Capullo start drawing Spawn, yeah, it's great work. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a ton of fun. Yeah, everything looks super cool and everything. But in the back of your mind, you're asking yourself, man, what would it be like if Greg Capullo ever got a chance to draw Batman? And eventually we got answers to that. What would it be like? It's pretty fucking cool is what it's like. And just about the time he started up uh, drawing Batman, I had the pleasure of not just meeting him at, at a con. I mean, that was cool, and I certainly did that. But as luck would have it, we it, it turned out that we were staying in the same hotel. And so, you know, I didn't want to be a pest about it or anything, but I just, I, I go down to the restaurant for uh, breakfast in the morning and I look a few tables over. Hey, there's Greg Capullo. Well, he's not, yeah, he's at a con, but he's not at the con right now, you know. So I didn't want to make a... Uh, a big production out of it or anything. This is his time. First thing in the fucking morning. I mean, let the guy, let him have his breakfast and just, you know, leave him alone. And so I, that was where I was prepared to leave things. Now, I guess it was obvious that I was in town for the con because I was wearing a, a Green Lantern t-shirt at the time, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was Green Lantern. And so uh, he happened to see me get up from my table and, you know, walk down, walk down the, uh, the uh, aisle, make my way to uh, the, uh, the exit. And uh, as I passed by his table, he smiled and gave me thumbs up, you know. <clears throat> and so, of course, I smiled and gave him thumbs up back, but I did not initiate this. He did. And he didn't say anything or anything like that, but, you know, he waved, I waved, and everything was cool. And... That has really gone a long way towards informing my impressions of Greg Capullo 
as an artist and then also Greg Capullo just as a guy, you know. He does amazingly good work and he just my interactions with him, he just seems like a supremely like one of the coolest guys you could ever hope to meet, you know. That's just, you know, that has always been my impression of the guy. And then we get to this. All right. Now there's the whole thing with with Twitter drama is that there's always another tweet that you can read, right? There's always some other thing that you can throw in to add context and nuance and everything. But the bottom line here is what you see is what you get. And what you get here is somebody, we're just going to call this guy person A, sent a reply to uh, something Greg Capullo tweeted. He says, you may think it's about that, but it's not. It's about using, and if, if the context doesn't give it away, people, obviously they're talking about COVID and lockdowns and uh, basically who are we really trying to protect here? So uh, this person says, person A writes, you may think it's about that, but it's not. It's about using force to make other people comply with your irrational demands. This will cause a lot of infighting, which will hurt many times more of the people that a virus that has more than a 99% survival rate. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but we live in a society where at least I feel like I am perpetually bombarded by stupidity. All right. If I take the shot at every single stupid thing that I see somebody uh, say or hear somebody say or every single stupid thing that somebody leaks all over Twitter or, or just whatever. Guys, I don't have time to get anything done. Anything done. So there's a lot to be said for reading something that is just so hopelessly idiotic that there is no hope of redemption here. <clears throat> and so you just move on, don't engage, leave that person alone, and let them wallow in their own stupidity because honestly if you truly believe that what you're reading is something stupid sometimes maybe that's the worst punishment you know sometimes not doing not engaging not talking that's maybe the worst punishment you know <clears throat> and obviously that's not what greg capullo chose to do he replied saying, zero tolerance for idiots. How do you feel about being forced to wear a safety belt or removing your shoes at the airport? Please do not buy my work. Ignorance and selfishness on blast. Blocked. Now, people, maybe it's just the area that I happen to live in, but I've heard my whole life people argue about why should I wear a safety belt? Because ultimately the person's safety that I'm risking is my own. Look, if I was risking someone else's safety, I'd understand. But wearing a, a seatbelt could save my life. What if I don't want to? What if I don't want to save my life? I've heard people make, you know, libertarian points like that. Or removing shoes at the airport. Well, why am I being uh, suspected of anything? I mean, and that kind of leads down its own rabbit hole. We don't need to go into that. But people actually have made some very compelling arguments about who really needs to be removing their shoes and whatnot in, air, in uh, airports. <clears throat> just to kind of rise above the weeds for all of that, just try to ignore the hyperbole going on here. You know, the safety belt, removing your shoes, just skip that stuff for now. Just read everything else. Zero tolerance for idiots. Do not buy my work. Ignorance and selfishness. Blocked. This is a guy whose career, at least up to now, has depended upon the goodwill of fans. You know, going to cons, um, being not necessarily friends, but friendly with people. <clears throat> talking to them, building an audience, all of that. And it just got tossed absolutely out the window more <clears throat> yeah there's more uh let's see here next tweet this is person b a completely different person from the uh fan that 
Capullo replied to just a little while ago. Person B says, zero tolerance for pros who treat customers like shit. Greg Capullo, and you can read that. Was this abrasive? Was this person out of line for, it? well, that second sentence there? There's an argument. That you, you know what? Maybe he was. Maybe you don't need to say, say stuff like that to people. But look at what Capullo wrote. <clears throat> called that person, person A, he called him an idiot, and then publicly announced that he was blocking him. So all this person says is Greg Capullo can get... <clears throat> was that over the line? Well, I might be tempted to say yes, but is that... Is that really any worse than what is what person B said really any worse than what Greg Capullo said to person A? I of the beholder, but at the very least, this person isn't the first one to cross the Rubicon, person B. He's not the first one to cross the Rubicon in this exchange, now is he? All person A said is he kind of raised... Even if you don't think that what person A says here is a, is a fair and reasonable point... He's not being rude. I mean, at the very bare minimum, he isn't being rude. He's basically saying that he's basically making the libertarian argument of not using the coercive power of the state in order to force other people to bend to your will, right? <clears throat> now, I can understand if for some people that's a persuasive argument. Maybe for other people that's not a persuasive argument, but whatever. The point is he's not being rude. He's not being harsh. He's not being abrasive. It's not being anything. And this is how Capullo responded to person A. So person B pipes up, and he is getting a little salty now. <clears throat> so what's the response to this? You know, having sent this to uh, Greg Capullo, uh, what, what's the response now? You bet, incel. Incel. He calls somebody an incel. Now, person B I don't know who this person is. Uh, you know, is this person unable to get laid? Is this person married? Which maybe is, comes to the same thing. You know, uh, I don't know anything about this guy. Uh, the one thing he says is uh, he's got zero tolerance for pros who treat customers like shit. And then he says Greg Capullo can get... And are either of those things really appropriate? Well, considering that Greg Capullo has already been kind of rude himself, I don't think that what person B says is, or said is any worse than what Greg Capullo had already said himself to somebody who was completely inoffensive. And Greg Capullo's answer to that is, you bet incel. You bet incel. I mean... Guys, what the fuck is going on in this industry where something like this is allowed to happen? The, some people were even... I mean, look, uh, at, at the time that I uh, took this uh, screenshot, 384 likes, guys. This is not considered wrong or uh, abrasive or ultimately detrimental to the industry, to DC Comics, to or whoever employs Greg Capullo these days. None of this is considered out of line. There are people who are cheering him on. Cheering on, insulting multiple fans at this point, because these are two separate people. And these are people who, I can't speak for, for all of them, but I'm... Um, you know, Greg Capullo is just such a popular artist. It stands to reason that at least one of these, one of these people, up to this point, was a Greg Capullo fan. Now, I think we can reasonably say there is at least one less Greg Capullo fan in the world. Now, guys, comic book sales being what they are, can you afford to lose even one? Hmm. I mean. It would be one thing if we had a healthy and thriving uh, con scene that was going on right now. That people were still going to conventions. Well, hell, people were still having conventions. People were going to them. Um, artists were doing commissions. They're doing signings. They're doing panels. They're meeting people. They're getting their names out there. They're promoting themselves. 
it would be one thing if we still had that, but obviously we don't. I don't know if cons are ever coming back. But if they do, it's going to be, I think, very different. Very different than anything that we're used to. Uh, the industry as we knew it really doesn't seem like it's long for this world at this point. <clears throat> and now is not the time to go around uh, insulting people, making fun of them, calling them names, snidely dismissing them, blocking them. I don't think this is the environment for something like that. Greg Capullo obviously disagrees. And speaking of lost fans, now I kind of have to ask myself, well, I mean, I'm on Twitter. How long is it before Capullo comes after me because of something that I've said? It may be that he never comes after me. It may also be tomorrow that he comes after me. Nobody knows. And I'm sitting here su supposing that it could be as many as two different fans that have been turned off based upon their interactions with Greg Capullo. How many more are watching all of this and thinking the same thing I am? They don't want to deal with this guy anymore. <clears throat> how many how many fans is Greg Capullo alienating that are just bystanders in this, that are watching and are thinking, shit. He's getting 384 likes for calling somebody an incel. How many... Because, obviously, Twitter doesn't uh, monitor something like this. <clears throat> How many dislikes is he getting? Well, there's really no way to know that. We don't really know. How many people are sitting here watching him call other people incel and getting upset about that? There's no way to know. But it seems reasonable to think the number is more than zero. The state of comics, the state of the conduct of comic book pros. You're looking at it. Anyway, I'm CJ and that's that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, comment, like, and share this video because it really helps me out. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Cole Loves Comics.